Hi, and welcome to another Granite Fitness video podcast. Today's topic is the roots of the raw vegan diet, veganism explained. If you have been interested in health and weight loss for a while, you might have come across the raw vegan diet before. To those who haven't heard of it, this is primarily a plant and fruit based diet that also includes non-processed or minimally processed ingredients such as nuts, pulses, beans and lentils. Yes, this means cutting out meat, eggs, dairy and even refined flowers in some cases. From a health and fitness standpoint, the raw vegan diet is healthy and effective because it is low calorie, low fat and low carb. For those who are curious, I will even go out of my way to put some links um, at the bottom of this video. I have to be honest and say that for most people, this diet is not sustainable in the long term, but will be effective if you stick to it for at least a few weeks. Although it is extremely effective in the short term, I have to be honest and say that in a sense, the raw vegan diet philosophy is a bit of a marketing gimmick. This, art, uh, this video focuses on the roots of this diet, a phenomenon known as veganism, as well as the people who do practice this diet as part of their day-to-day -day lives, before the marketers hijacked it for their own interests. In modern day Western society, veganism is a dirty word to many people who have heard of it. We often think of vegans as smelly tree-hugging hippies who don't eat meat, dairy or eggs. We often think of them as self-righteous, judgmental people who hate farmers. We associate them with animal rights movements and believe that they are disruptive, eco-terrorist extremists. While it is true that a minority of vegans are, most of them are not like that in reality. Let's explore this a bit deeper, so that we can have an educated perspective of your average vegan who certainly doesn't fall into the extremist category. Firstly, veganism is not merely dietary, it's a philosophy. Not everyone knows this. In its most basic terms, veganism is the philosophy of living without using animal products. That also means no leather belts, shoes, fur coats, or wool. For every decision in life, vegans will have to think about whether each option involves violating the will of any animal. One might argue that the act of shearing are for the sheep's benefit as it helps them to feel cool and comfortable during the hot summer months. Or that bees make honey anyway. However, these points do not override the basic precepts of veganism. Breastfeeding, however, is a natural phenomenon and is therefore acceptable practice to vegans. Veganism might be about giving equal rights to animals and other sentient beings, but this does not mean elevating them above humans or any other species. Most vegans believe in equality in the same way that most feminists believe in the equal rights of women and men, not more rights for women than men. Of course there will be exceptions, but this is the basic philosophy. To illustrate this point, a well-renowned vegan activist gave an example that if you were walking on a forest path with him and a bear attacked, he will physically defend you if, you, if need be. He will not use his veganism as a reason to watch you get hurt, just because it's the best natural behaviour to be violent towards those who violate its perceived territorial sovereignty. Interestingly, the concept of veganism is prevalent in Western countries as a lifestyle choice, but yet it is rare in the developing world. The closest parallel to it would be the Eastern religions of Buddhism and Hinduism, both of which allow some form of vegetarian diet depending on how strict one is with adhering to his or her religion. The reason Buddhists refrain from eating meat is because their first precept is no killing sentient beings. This is also the same reason why they oppose the death penalty. A similar philosophical train of thought is also present in Hinduism, where some animals are also revered as gods. However, neither religion aligns perfectly with vegan philosophy, which is a western construct. Interestingly, some Buddhist denominations will allow their monks to eat meat that has been offered to them by a devotee. This is not only out of respect to the devotee's sincerity, but also the philosophy of minimizing waste, since the animal has already been killed. I hope this short video has shed some light on the philosophy of veganism. If you want to know more, you should talk to a vegan. However, please pick one who is calm and patient, and does not seem like the judgmental type. Otherwise, it could be a headache for you. As a vegetarian myself, I do not condemn you omnivores for your choice to eat meat, neither do I perceive myself to be morally or ethically superior.
to each his or her own. As long as you're aware of where your food comes from and are comfortable with and at peace with your eating choices, I'm happy for you. Of course, as a fitness motivator, I want the best for you and hope that you will adopt a healthy diet with or without me. If you think you want to attempt the raw vegan diet for a period of time, check out the resources on the Granite Fitness blog. If you want to learn about healthy eating in general, check out the Strategic Nutrition Guide or get it as part of the Granite Fitness Solution. Eat healthily, be happy. Hi and thanks for stopping by. I hope you have found this video useful. Please subscribe to this channel, engage with us on social media, and check out the links below. Have a great day and we'll be in touch soon.